on World News Tonight. Johnson survives. UK PM narrowly escapes a vote of no confidence after the so-called Partygate scandal. Putin's warning. Russian president threats the United States and other nations as they send advanced rockets to Ukraine. Monkeypox spreads. Growing concerns in the United States as two versions of the virus are now spreading. And painting the skies. Plumes of colored smoke decorate the skies in Toronto as spectators enjoy the view. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now there is hot political drama in the United Kingdom as the UK Prime Minister survived a no-confidence vote brought on by members of his own party over his behaviour and his leadership. Boris Johnson lives to fight another day. The British Prime Minister has won nearly 59% of support from his Conservative Party in a confidence vote. 359 ballots were cast, no spoiled ballots, that the vote in favour uh, of having confidence in Boris Johnson as leader was 211 votes, and the vote against was 148 votes. And therefore, I can announce that the Parliamentary Party does have confidence. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mathematical victory for Boris Johnson, but the numbers leave him weakened. Even though he insists the result is good news. So I think it's a, a convincing result, a decisive result, and what it, what it means is that as a, as a government we can move on and focus on the stuff that I think really matters to people. Once seen as a charismatic leader that helped the Conservative Party win a huge parliamentary majority in 2019, the Prime Minister has since been plagued by a string of scandals. Most notably, what's been dubbed Partygate, a series of revelations that Downing Street ignored lockdown rules at a time when pandemic restrictions prevented the rest of the country from social interactions, including visits to dying relatives or to attend funerals. The Prime Minister said he took full responsibility for everything that took place on his watch, but that did little to appease the public which booed Boris Johnson during the Queen's Jubilee celebrations last weekend. There has also been unhappiness within the Conservative Party over tax rises and the government's response to rising living costs. Russian President Vladimir Putin warns the U.S. against sending Ukraine long-range missiles that could be fired into Russia, all as Russian forces gain even more ground in the east. Ukrainian forces claim they shot down this Russian helicopter in eastern Ukraine today. But unlike before, losses on the battlefield are not slowing Russia's assault. Miro Popovich, a Ukrainian-American who served in the U.S. military, says the fighting now in the east is the most intense he's seen by far. Ukrainians are waiting for the multi-billion dollar American package of aid and arms. The United States and the United Kingdom have already promised to supply rockets that can fire up to 50 miles. President Putin dismissed those weapons as inconsequential, but said if the West supplies longer-range weapons that threaten Russia, he would escalate. Perhaps to prove a point, Russia bombed Kyiv for the first time in weeks. This missile, shown flying low, believed to be part of the attack. Russia claims it destroyed Western weapons. Ukraine believe Russia was mainly sending a message. Now, global production setbacks stemming from supply chain issues and the war in Ukraine are increasing as the sugar industry becomes the most recent to be affected. The sugar industry is the latest sector to be hit by the war in Ukraine. Worries are rising that gas shortages may soon impact global production. Stefan Streng is the head of the Association of Southern German Sugar Beet Growers. So during the last three years, um, the demand of sugar is higher than the production. So we are at actual in a, in a situation that there is not a lot of stocks um, in the world. So when we are losing um, a part of the worldwide um, sugar harvest 
beet harvest and the sugar production, it means that we will have a big supply problem. And this uh, it will be a supply problem for the whole world. Sugar beets make up 32% of the world's sugar supply. The manufacturing process uses a relatively large amount of energy for a short period of time. And Strang says most of that energy comes from coal, oil or gas. And there are many factories that are 100% depending on gas delivery. So they will not be able to start the campaign. And this means there is no sugar production at all. This means no uh, beet uh, uh, cutting, no processing. So uh, a big disaster for the beet growers and for the sugar industry. According to the International Confederation of European Beet Growers, the European Union is the third largest sugar producer in the world. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador announced today that he would skip the regional summit of the Americas in the United States due to Washington's failure to invite countries it views as undemocratic. A bumpy start with what promised to be a symbol of cooperation and has now turned into a showcase of division. Cuba, Nicaragua and Venezuela did not make the cut this year to the summit of the Americas. In response, Mexican President Obrador said he would stay away, citing U.S. hegemony and lack of respect for nations. Leaders from Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador said they will also skip the summit this year. I'm not going to the summit because not all the countries of America are invited. There cannot be a summit of the Americas if all the countries of the American continent do not participate. A reaction that Ned Price preferred to downplay, citing a long-lasting relationship between the two countries. Foreign Minister Ebrard will represent Mexico instead. Uh, we have um, certainly heard from President Lopez Obrador today. Uh, we understand his position on this. As I said before, we look forward uh, to engaging with Foreign Secretary Ebrard. I'm very gratified uh, that the Secretary's uh, counterpart, Foreign Secretary Ebrard, uh, will be in attendance. We will have a number of opportunities to engage with our uh, Mexican counterparts in the context of uh, the summit this week, uh, and we look forward to those engagements. The leftist leader's absence could still diminish the impact of the summit. U.S.-Mexico relations are at the heart of pressing immigration and trade issues, two major topics at the top of the agenda this week. U.S. officials are hopeful the tensions will blow over, but experts argue this defiance reflects a dying U.S. influence in the region. Former leader of the far-right Proud Boys group and four associates charged with seditious conspiracy related to the deadly January 6 Capitol riot. The U.S. Justice Department charged leaders of the right-wing group the Proud Boys with seditious conspiracy on Monday for their involvement in the January 6 attack on the Capitol. The new indictment accuses Enrique Tarrio, the former leader of the group and four of his top lieutenants of plotting to prevent Congress from certifying Democrat Joe Biden's 2020 presidential victory over Donald Trump. Seditious conspiracy is defined as attempting to overthrow, put down, or to destroy by force the government of the United States. All five defendants have already pleaded not guilty to other criminal charges related to the attack. Three members of another right-wing group, the Oath Keepers, have already pleaded guilty to seditious conspiracy charges. Its leader, Stuart Rhodes, has pleaded not guilty. The charges come ahead of primetime hearings from the House Select Committee investigating January 6th. Committee member Representative Jamie Raskin says the hearings will prove that the assault by Trump supporters trying to overturn his election defeat was more than just a protest. Four people died the day of the attack, one fatally shot by police and the others of natural causes. More than 100 police officers were injured and one died the next day. Four officers later died by suicide. The Capitol sustained millions of dollars in damage. The panel and its dozens of investigators have conducted more than 1,000 depositions and interviews and collected more than 140,000 documents. The committee has not yet said which witnesses it will call at its Thursday hearing. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news.
Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, concerns are growing over the monkeypox virus in the United States. As the CDC is now saying, the cases appear to be coming from two different outbreaks. Experts say focusing on vaccinating people in outbreak hotspots like Africa is the answer to help stop the spread. Tonight, new concerns over the monkeypox outbreak. CDC officials have traced two versions of monkeypox now circulating in the U.S. While they're similar to each other, their genetic analysis shows that they're not linked to each other. New data from the CDC shows New York with seven cases, California with six, and Florida with four. Two of the cases in the U.S. were found to be genetically similar to that of a Texas man who traveled to Africa last year. The other known cases resemble the genetic signature of the outbreak of cases found in Europe. They're both happening simultaneously, which I think reflects the fact that we've let monkeypox be out of control in Africa for an extended period of time. Doctors explain that these are not variants in the way we think of mutating COVID-19 variants. Instead, these two monkeypox varieties are simply different members of the same family, each marked by symptoms including fever, headache, muscle aches, and exhaustion, along with the development of a distinct rash, often beginning with the face and then spreading to other parts of the body. It can spread when a person comes in contact with an infected animal or human. That virus likely began to spread through person to person, close contact, possibly intimate or sexual contact. Those who study viruses say the window is closing on possible intervention. A Yale epidemiologist suggesting LGBTQ organizations are the secret weapon here due to a current prevailing theory that at least some of the current spread started with attendees of LGBTQ plus events in Europe. The more people that get infected, the harder it becomes logistically to be able to get to all those contacts and vaccinate them in order to stop forward transmission. Experts say focusing on vaccinations in outbreak hotspots like Africa is the answer. The U.S. currently has more than 36,000 doses of the vaccine Genios immediately available and has asked the manufacturer Bavarian Nordic to send 36,000 more. In the meantime, the CDC recommends using good hand hygiene, especially after contact with infected animals or humans. The UN's nuclear watchdog has predicted that North Korea may be preparing to conduct its first nuclear test since 2017. This comes as the U.S. State Department has also expressed concerns over the possibility that the regime could conduct its seventh nuclear test. The chief of the IAEA has expressed concerns that North Korea may be preparing for a nuclear test. Addressing the agency's Board of Governors on Monday, Director General Rafael Grossi explained that one of the tunnel entrances at the nuclear test site in Pungiri, in the north of the country, has been reopened as part of possible preparations for a nuclear test. He added that this was consistent with similar activity for previous nuclear tests in North Korea. He further noted that a nuclear test goes against the U.S. Security Council and would cause serious concern. In related news, the U.S. State Department has also raised concern over the possibility that the North could conduct a nuclear test in the near future. Speaking to journalists on Monday, State Department spokesperson Ned Price called the situation something that Washington has warned of for some time, adding that it is a contingency that the U.S. has been planning for. Against his backdrop, a senior U.S. official highlighted that Washington and its two closest Asian allies, Seoul and Tokyo, remain ready to counter any threat posed by the North. Speaking during a forum jointly hosted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies and Korea Foundation, Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs Daniel Crittenbrink, however, commented that the door to diplomacy remains open. He further added that the U.S. does and will not link its humanitarian assistance for the North to progress in denuclearization talks with the regime. Now Elon Musk has threatened to walk away from his takeover of Twitter, accusing the social media company of thwarting his request to learn more about its user base. Elon Musk threatened to throw away his $44 billion deal to buy Twitter on Monday telling the social media network in a letter that if it does not hand over sufficient data on spam and fake accounts, the deal's off. The letter sent by Musk's lawyer said Twitter was in a, quote, clear material breach of its obligations and that the Tesla CEO reserves all rights to terminate the deal. The letter also said Musk suspected Twitter was dancing around the issue of fake accounts, 
saying, quote, Musk believes Twitter is transparently refusing to comply with its obligations under the merger agreement, which is causing further suspicion that the company is withholding the requested data. Musk's lawyer said the billionaire was clearly entitled to the data, in part so that he could facilitate the financing of the deal. Musk waived the detailed due diligence that buyers typically do on takeover targets when he agreed to buy Twitter in April in an effort to get the deal done. In May, Musk tweeted that he would put the deal temporarily on hold while he waits for Twitter to provide the data on spam and fake accounts, which he has claimed must represent at least 20 percent of its user base. Twitter has said the number is less than 5 percent. The world's richest man is contractually obligated to pay Twitter a $1 billion breakup fee if he does not complete the deal, but the contract also contains a specific performance clause that a judge can cite to force Musk to complete the deal. Twitter shares fell as much as 5.5% in early trading, but recovered some ground by midday. Texting will never be the same as there is a big announcement from Apple. The company revealed a new feature to edit or even get these unsent text messages with its new operating system. Good morning and welcome to WWDC. We have a big day of announcements about our latest technologies and platforms. And they certainly did. Tech giant Apple on Monday announced a slew of new features and upgrades to the software running some of its most popular products, such as the iPhone, Apple Watch, and MacBook, while also unveiling an overhaul to its CarPlay system for vehicles, which will now feature a new car dashboard that will display major instruments such as speed and gas mileage. Apple's new MacBook Air will now run on a new M2 silicon processor, which it says is 35% faster than the previous M1 chip. The only MacBook Air starts at $1199. The M2 chip will also power the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which will start at $1299 and be available next month. In addition, Apple introduced a new Buy Now Pay Later system for Apple Pay users, called Apple Pay Later. It will be available anywhere that Apple Pay is accepted and managed through the Apple Wallet. Users will be able to make four equal payments with no interest or fees. When it comes to the iPhone, one of the most notable upgrades in iOS 16 will be an iMessage. Apple has now added an edit button, beating Twitter to a long requested feature. Have you ever sent a message only to immediately realize you didn't quite say what you intended? Well, no worries because now you can edit any message you just sent. So embarrassing typos can be a thing of the past. Bob O'Donnell, president of Technalysis Research, gave some praise to Apple after the presentation. Well, you know, I thought it was great. I mean, I think what we saw Apple doing is doing the real meat and potatoes upgrades that people are looking for. Refinements to iOS, refinements to Mac OS, uh, refinements to the iPad OS. Um, things that people have been asking for. Apple did not provide any hints about future devices such as a mixed reality headset. Such a device would be Apple's first entry into a new category of computing device since the Apple Watch shipped in 2015 and would put it in direct competition with Meta, which has disclosed plans for a mixed reality headset code named Cambria to be released this year. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Centuries-old shipwrecks complete with gold coin treasures have been discovered off Colombia. Colombian naval officials conducting underwater monitoring of the long-sunken Sanjos Galleon discovered the two historical shipwrecks nearby. Health officials in Montreal were offering monkeypox vaccinations to people who are at high risk of catching the disease. An Iraqi court sentenced a retired British geologist to 15 years in prison for trying to smuggle ancient artifacts out of the country. The decision shocked the man's family. Ahead of the World's Ocean Day on the June 8th, international marine conservation organizations removed over 23.5 metric tons of waste from the seas around the Greek island of Ithaca. Ahead of a visit by Belgian King Philip, some in Congo want to know if he'll apologize for the brutality of the Belgium's colonial past and what was benefits of such a visit.
And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with skies over Toronto filled with smoke in a rainbow of different colors as a part of a massive pyrotechnical show celebrating the city and the examining the peril of climate change. Stay safe and have a good night.